Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Stacy, and I am Stress Knits on Instagram. I'm coming to you from Detroit, Michigan, where I live with my husband, Doug, our daughter, Eliza, who you'll be here running around, and our pug, Esther. Uh, she's playing with water right now. Um, so if you hear weird noises like that, that's why. Um, she's a big fan of like pouring water. So anyway, I thought it would be really fun to bring you my haul, my yarn haul from um, Flock Fiber Festival, which took place in Seattle. I went on Saturday, August 5th. I think it was the 5th and um, had just the best time. And I also went to the Lamb and Kid on Bainbridge Island. So I just wanted to take you through my fiber journey on this incredible trip that I just took with my mom and what I bought and what the plan is for these beautiful yarns. <laughs> the first yarn purchase I made was at the Lamb and Kid. My mom and I took the ferry to Brain Bainbridge Island and went right for the Lamb and Kid. This is a store I have been dreaming about. I really love Sarah's style. I love her color palette. And honestly, she has made me feel a little braver <laughs> with color options and um, finding pops um, here and there along with the neutrals and earthy tones that I usually go for. So I knew I wanted to go there and we only unfortunately had time to go to one yarn store on the island, but I knew I'd be seeing La Mercerie, the other yarn store that I wanted to go to on Bainbridge. I knew I'd be seeing them at Flock. Um, and it was a bit of a, um, yeah, it was a bit of a conundrum, but I, I just decided to go to the Lamb and Kid. So um, the first thing that I picked out, I've actually already cast on. It is a, um, I bought two skeins of the Lamb and Kid. I actually put this on backwards. Uh, the Lamb and Kid Todd Worsted. And this is the Loam colorway. It's this beautiful, it looks exactly like this, um, a beautiful brownish green color. Loam is the perfect name for it. My mom picked this out for a hat. So I had, um, they scanned up one at the shop for me and I have cast on my go-to vanilla hat pattern, which is um, the Pearl Soho classic cuffed hat. I will be trying to put photos <laughs> here um, and everything will be linked below but it's just my favorite hat. You start with one by one ribbing. There is a tubular cast on, but I just did a long tail. Um, I do both for this hat and um, I just didn't really want to be fussy with a long uh, tubular cast on. Uh, so I just did a long tail and it's perfect. Um, my mom is really liking it, which makes me happy. And I'm about halfway done with the ribbing and then I will be on to the rest of the hat, which is just stockinette. It's a, it's my favorite hat. I knit it for everybody. It's my like normal gift hat. And I also have knit a bunch for myself and my family. So that was purchase number one. And then number two, I saw she had this whole shelving unit of Trio, which is a newer base. Um, it is 70% merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Um, and it is incredible. Um, I've already knit with it and I have the exact same plans for these skeins. This is the colorway Alpine Flannel, which I have loved forever. Um, it's just this beautiful, moody, blue, green, it screams Pacific Northwest. Um, now that I have been there, it just, this is such, such the vibe. Um, it actually reminds me of the beach that we went to. Um, yeah, I just, I really, I love this color and it's not picking up just the subtleties of the tonality of this yarn, which I think is so incredible. I love hand dyed yarn, especially tonals because there's such a different depth to them than a commercially dyed yarn. Um, so I'm very excited for this and this also has a plan. This is going to be another mini mock neck tank. 
because I'm in love. And I actually have mine to show you that I finished for the trip. Um, and I also shared this in a previous um, knitting vlog. But this is the Mini Mock Neck Tank by Jessie Mae Designs. And I knit the, this is the 3X, but it came out to about an extra large because of my gauge. I have a very tight gauge. Um, I did a slightly shorter um, neckline because I felt like it being up too high, I just wouldn't wear it. But this, I wore it all day Saturday. I wore it to the yarn event and also when we were out in the city. And it is maybe my favorite garment I've ever knit because of how wearable it is. I am going to wear the heck out of this. So I, in my head, I want to make a whole wardrobe full of these and just a bunch of different colors that I can use for layering under button-ups and flannels that I can wear under cardigans that I can wear um, just on their own. So that this is like my new favorite pattern right now. And I feel like I'm always going to have one on the needles for a while. Um, and so this will be one of my next mini mock neck tanks. Last but not least from the Lemon Kid, I I tried to leave these skeins behind, but I the, the color palette just kept calling to me. So I have had the Wonderlust Knitters Bright Here, Bright Now scarf in my queue since it was released. It is a very wide, beautiful scarf made with Surrey Alpaca. And it reminds me of a scarf that I really love that I no longer have. So I want to make one and my mom also tried it on. So I might be making her one as well. And I saw, so first I'm gonna tell you what caught my eye. This is Lila. Uh, this is the Birdie Base, the 74% Alpaca, 26% Silk, 328 yards per 50 grams. Um, it's called Birdie from the Lamb and Kid, uh, Diamond Lane, because it's hand dyed. But this caught my eye and I'm not a huge purple fan. I'm very picky about purples and blues and reds, which is actually really funny because it's kind of a lot of what I bought this trip. Um, but I kept, I kept being drawn to Lila and I couldn't leave. And next to Lila was one of my favorite colors from the Lamb and Kid, Bakelite. And it's just this beautiful like orangey yellow. And I saw these two, I was like, oh, that's beautiful. And then I saw Spritz. <laughs> I was like, oh, these three together are wonderful. I kind of want something to kind of mute it down. So I grabbed my favorite blue, which is the same color I did my mini mock neck tank in, and that is Bell Bottom Blues. And this is part of my color palette. And I am just in love with these colors together. Now the, um, the bright here, bright now, I think calls for five or six colorways, and this is just four. So I want to add a, um, probably a light gray into this mix. And then I also ha already have a skein of Alpine flannel. And I thought maybe that <laughs> could be spectacular, kind of separating the colors with a row or two. And I also have Siren, which could be interesting. Um, and I also have, what is this, Tarte? That could be really fun. Um, so I'm just playing around with um, what I have right now and figuring out what I want to do. But I do think I'm going to be casting this on soon as a long-term project because it's quite large. Um, but I just, I really want a cozy scarf for this winter. And I think the Bright Here, Bright Now by Wonderless Knitter um, Caitlin will fit the bill. And now we are at Flock Fiber Festival, the next and last place I bought yarn on this trip. And I bought way more than I was expecting. First though, my mom and I made a beeline right to the, um, the merch booth because we really wanted merch. My mom got herself a black t-shirt. 
Um, and she also bought me the tote bag and the crew neck sweatshirt. Um, I actually think I could have gone down a size in the sweatshirt, but it is so incredibly comfortable. And I know um, Jess from La Mercerie, who ran the whole thing, who did such an incredible job with this fiber event. It's honestly my favorite that I've ever been to. I haven't been to many, um, but this is by far my absolute favorite event I've been to. All of the vendors were incredible. Everyone was so nice. Everything went so smoothly. <laughs> um, it was just wonderful. And that is a testament to Jess and Emily and the rest of the La Mercerie team. So thank you to you guys. If you watch this, I don't know if you will, but um, just thank you for an incredible show and just the cutest little merch. So, um, so my mom and I went and got merch and then I made a beeline again, uh, to the layman kid booth because I wanted to, um, to meet some of the people there. Um, I'd been talking to my friend Jackie and I really needed to say hello to, Sarah, the owner of Lamb and Kid, and the other people that work there. Um, I met Charlene, and I met Ashley, I met Bob, and everyone was just so incredibly sweet. And I don't remember the woman's name who helped me at the Lamb and Kid shop, but she was also wonderful. Every, like Everyone we met this weekend was so kind and genuine. Okay, so... Um, yes, I bought some stuff at the Lamb and Kid. The first was this radish colorway on Todd, which is a DK weight base, 65% yak, 35% cashmere. And I wanted to make a hat for myself as well um, because I'm knitting my mom a hat for the trip from <laughs> yarn from the trip. So I wanted to make my own and radish had been calling my name in several bases and I I saw it in Todd and I just grabbed it because I knew. Uh, it is coming up way pinker in the camera. There's definitely more of like a coral salmon vibe to this yarn, which I really love. So Radish, incredible. I think this is from the Italy collection. And then I was talking to Sarah and I wanted to know because she believes that everyone has a pink that they can wear and pink being one of my favorite colors. I wanted to get her opinion on what pinks she thought would go well with my complexion. And one of her recommendations was actually radish. Um, and then the other two were not at the, sh at the booth, but we chatted about those. Um, and then she was like, you know what, actually this red would look incredible. And I, I am a sucker for a warm orangey red. And so I grabbed it for a mini mock neck tank. <laughs> and so this is heirloom on Trio and it will be another mini mock neck. Um, I, have, I just have this vision of me knitting this through the holidays because it's just the most beautiful red. Um, heirloom is incredible. It's the perfect tomato red and I just, I love it. And I'm very excited to have something this color in my wardrobe. Next, I went to Spin Cycle and I had a mission at the Spin Cycle booth. I really, really wanted nice skeins of Ghost Ranch and Ghost Ranch is, it's such a beautiful colorway, but there are there are so many differences in it, and I'm very picky about skeins of Ghost Ranch. And I didn't want anything that was crazy yellow. I didn't want anything that had a bunch of bright spots or a lot of brown. I wanted a decent amount of pink and blue, and I found <laughs> the three perfect skeins of Dream State um, in Ghost Ranch. So here we are. <laughs> and it's just... I feel like this is quintessential Ghost Ranch when you think of this colorway from Spin Cycle. Um, this is what my mind goes to. And I have one more that leans much more pink in my stash already, but I think that's okay. These will be a part of a Pressed Flowers Pullover by Amy Christoffers that has been, again, in my queue since it was in test knitting. I love the Pressed Flowers collection. I'm really excited to have a pullover because even though I love the cardigan, I think I will wear a pullover more. Um, 
and yeah so I just I grabbed these three skeins and they are they're just perfection and I'm so happy I got to pick out spin cycle in person that is such a luxury <laughs> um and I don't uh, my closest yarn shop that has Dream State. It's not super far. It's in Ann Arbor. Uh, but it's just very hard for me to get there. So very excited to have these as a part of my stash with the plans of a pressed flowers cardigan. After Spin Cycle, I went right to Hello Lavender. I went to Hello Lavender. I almost forgot because it's not in the yarn. I like packed things away as best as I could. Um, where are you? Did you? Here you are. Okay. As best as I could because I bought more than I expected at this. This is the most yarn I've ever bought at a festival. Um, and still there were things that I wish I could have bought, but I just, I had zero room. I used some of my mom's room and her luggage. There was just nowhere else for this yarn to go. Um, but yes, of course, I went to Hello Lavender. She is my favorite stitch marker creator. Her artistry is beautiful. I already have a stitch marker on a project. Um, but I, I regret not getting the flock stitch marker, but I've come, I've come to relax about it. I'm at peace with that fact because the two that I picked up are just so beautiful. So the first one is this little like agate slice and the three colors of the flower charms are so pretty and they're on the um the clasp stitch marker so you can use them as both a progress keeper and a stitch marker which i think is just incredible they are really easy to open and close i also know some people use them as earrings my ears aren't pierced, but if that is you, that would be cool. Um, so I bought that one. And then I am obsessed with her no waste stitch markers. I actually think the agate slice is also a no waste stitch marker maybe, but I love when she blends all of her, um, the waste from the stitch markers that she makes and she creates this beautiful like marbled situation. And I picked up this one it is incredibly beautiful um, and I'm there is also a pink flower that I'm using as the progress keeper on my mom's hat so this also came with it and I was just so thrilled to meet Reshma in person we have um, chatted and we've collaborated before and I just love everything she makes. I almost exclusively use Hello Lavender stitch markers. I just, I love everything she does. It's so beautiful. So happy that I got to finally meet her and her husband, Mike, and purchase stitch markers from her in person. And then I walked across the aisle to the Explorer Knits booth, which holy smokes, Allie, she had an incredible show. She always had a line at her booth and it, there's no, like, there's no denying why. Her colorways are beautiful. She is a wonderful, beautiful person inside and out. And I am so thrilled that I got to meet her and purchase some yarn of hers in person. So I knew when she was breeding the Seattle collection to this show that I had one thing that I wanted to get. And it was a skein of DK, her Rockies DK in Pike Place. Um, again, another orangey red. This is going to be a hat for me, I think. Um, I'm probably just going to do a ribbed hat and um, either the... There's the Manhattan hat, which I've knit before and I love. And there's also the um, classic ribbed beanie hat, <laughs> something like that by Pearl Soho um, that I've also knit and love. So it'll probably be a ribbed hat. And I am just so thrilled with this. Um, there was a darker blue, I think it was Puget Sound, that was not available when I went to go shop that I also would have grabbed. Um, but I'm just so thrilled to get Pike's Place because it was 
it was such a cornerstone of our trip. We went to Pike's Place a few times and um, it's the perfect red of the sign at the market. My friend Sarah owns the shop Pearl 2 Walla Walla in Walla Walla, Washington. And she had a booth at Flock. And she also is a dyer behind um, Pearls Before Wine. And um, Pearl 2 Walla Walla has their own spin cycle colorway. And I love it. It's called Cloud Nine. And I remember when she was picking out the inspiration for it. And I was just so thrilled. And I have liked very specific, I'm like this with every spin cycle colorway. I like very specific um, parts of these colorways because of how it's dyed, each skein's a little bit different. And I had a vision for what I wanted for Cloud Nine. And she had a huge setup of it at the shop, at the booth. <laughs> and, um, I finally was able to grab some. So this is Cloud Nine by Spin Cycle for Pearl 2 Walla Walla. And it's maybe the two most beautiful skeins ever. I actually don't have plans for this, but I have um, I always have a need for Spin Cycle. I love collecting very special skeins for projects later. I'm questioning um, using this for a couple of different projects, Eliza's dancing right now. So if you hear that, um, but I just, I just love Cloud9 so much. The last stop I made at Flock Fiber Festival was at the booth of La Mercerie, who is again, the shop that ran this entire event. And it was just, it was so incredible. Jess and Emily did a phenomenal job planning this. Um, if you can go next year, I highly recommend it. Um, I don't think I'll be able to, but I will be very uh, excited to hear all about it next year. So I picked up their exclusive colorway uh, from Spin Cycle as well, which is called Pale September. And it might be my favorite Spin Cycle colorway ever. Um, just really beautiful peachy tones with there's like lavender and a little bit of a beautiful orange Eliza's dancing. So, um, and pinks and it's it's beautiful. I actually think I'm going to be using this in my tessellated pullover. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what other colors I want to go along with it. And then I bought my first La Bien Ami yarn and it is the new Sport Nouveau base which is 100% non-superwash fine merino 328 yards per 100 grams. And this is, sorry about Alessa, um, this is the lichen colorway. I think this is going to be a top of some sort. I'm not sure what yet, um, but it will be something. And I just, I love this color so much. And I'm just, I'm thrilled that I got to bring it home with me. And that is everything that I bought at Flock and the Layman Kid on Bainbridge Island. Um, again, this was just such a beautiful, this it was such a beautiful event. And I, if, I feel so lucky my mom and I were able to make this trip happen and we just had the best time. Um, I got to meet so many of you. Thank you so much for coming up and saying hi. There are also people I didn't say hello to because I was feeling, it was getting to that part of the day where I was feeling a little awkward and feeling a little peopled out, which I know a lot of you <laughs> understand. Um, so I, there were still people that I didn't get to meet and say hi to. Um, I'm thinking about Ariel from Airy Knits and Amy Schur. Um, who is an incredible knitwear designer, um, Amy from La Bien Ami, and just so many of you that I didn't get to say hi to because I was feeling a little nervous and um, self-conscious. <laughs> but um, again, okay, we'll finish this up in a second. Eliza is dancing to the, Mat the Matilda movie musical soundtrack and um, she's spinning a lot, which is part of like her sensory thing. So. We have to keep playing the same song. Um, but like I said, I got to meet so many of you and I'm just 
I'm so thankful for how kind and welcoming everyone was to me and my mom. And I am just going to forever be grateful for this trip. So I also wanted to share with you one more <laughs> purchase from a long time ago, um, a couple of months ago that I am going to be casting on now because it really just reminds me of the Pacific Northwest, specifically our, my mom and I's trip to Olympic National Park. And um, I just wanted it on a sweater that reminds me of that right now. So this is going to be the Snowy Forest by Midori Heroes, um, I believe. I might have gotten that wrong, but I think that's correct. Um, and I am using the Lemon Kid. And this is the Grand Forest colorway in Todd. My hair is everywhere, of course. And I am pairing that with Base Camp on Birdie, which is just so beautiful. And I think it's going to add such a beautiful depth of color. Um, I have swatched, so I will be casting this on probably today or tomorrow. So. So I wanted to share that with you that this is kind of um, going to be one of my <laughs> knits that was inspired by the Pacific Northwest. And then I'm also currently working on a uh, mini mock neck tank in a slug. And I didn't get to see any banana slugs. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little sad about it. Uh, my mom and I were like scouring the forest for them. We were just looking for these banana slugs because I really wanted to see one, but that is okay. They didn't want to come say hello and that is perfectly fine. Um, but again, just thank you to everybody. And my mom and I had such a beautiful time. Um, I would love to hear about your knitting plans. If you have anything that you are looking forward to casting on, anything that you feel inspired to knit by something you did, whether it was flock or anything else. Um, I guess I'd love to hear what you're doing. So I am going to get this edited and uploaded hopefully today. <laughs> and I will also be uploading my Seattle and Olympic National Park vlog that I did for Patreon. Um, this was just such a special trip for my mom and I that I just want to share it with everybody. So Patreon gets it for a little bit before everyone else and then it will soon be to you. So again, okay. thank you so much. I'm going to turn the song on again for you. Do you want to say bye? Okay, say bye. 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 We love okay. you. Okay. Yes. Let's listen to it again. All right. I will see you soon.